All right. Despite uh, some injuries, especially, of course, at the quarterback position, Utah able to rack up some wins, stay competitive in the Pac-12 after two consecutive championships, uh, finish out at eight and four in their final Pac-12 season, headed to the Big 12. Of course, we got Joseph Demora here from the Utah Football Digest uh, right here on YouTube. Joseph, how are you doing tonight? I am doing well, man. I mean, it's a good time to be a Utah fan. It was a, a tough year, but considering how bad it could have been, it went pretty well. And uh, I'm excited to be here, man. How are you doing tonight? Doing well. Good to have you on here. Let's look at uh, National Signing Day, of course, wrapped up on a Wednesday. You know, Utah is the type program. They're going to bring them in. They're going to develop them. They're not going to worry about the recruiting ranking. We see about a top 50 finish, 24-7 sports in particular, and uh, close to 20 commits. What are your thoughts about the signing class and who stands out to you? Yeah, I think uh, a lot has been made about the top 50, top 60 class, depending on where you look. I, I think really what the case is with that, if you really look at Utah's class, when you talk about high-end talent, you have to go to the top five recruiting classes in the Big 12 to really find other classes that compare to it. Utah has actually done a super good job recruiting. And I think really what we saw this year was we were focused on getting quality over quantity. Utah has a ton of quantity. We have brought in tons of three stars over the past few years and had solid recruiting classes. What we did this year is go for some big dogs. I posted on Twitter a little while ago. We had two of the top three in-state recruits three of the top five in-state recruits and five of the top 10 in-state recruits. And that's on top of a bunch of other good players that we were able to bring in. U Utah brought in some studs. I really don't think this is like a Utah wasn't able to get more players. I've, I've heard from the parents of some of these players that Utah is not talking to these players. Uh, just, just to give you guys an idea, it's not like Utah is starving for more talent. We brought in a lot of the guys. I'm sure we got there's one or two guys we wanted that we didn't get, but it, it, there's a ton of these guys in the top, you know, 20 or so in state recruits that Utah probably could have gotten that, but they felt comfortable with what they had. Utah, even Kyle Whittingham, uh, like uh, hinted at it before the bowl game that he does expect some more turbulence after the bowl game. I'm not sure exactly the details of that, but I would not be shocked at all to see Utah bring in another three plus freshmen. And another thing about some of the freshmen I noticed, you know, just so you guys know, like a little bit about my channel, it's all about recruiting. Like uh, I spend a lot of time talking about the games and stuff like that, but I usually like do a video on each player and I break them down and I talk about them. So I, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of these guys. And um, I would say some of the recruits that weren't super highly rated that Utah got later in the, um, in the signing period or, or late commits for Utah were guys that I think that they're, they might not have these crazy ceilings, but when you watch the tape, they looked good. They didn't like maybe athletically, they're not monsters, but I'm telling you like the tape was, I think they're looking for like safe guys that if they needed to play a little bit, would be able to get in there and play. I'm telling you, we saw, we saw some good players and some good tape. Um, guys that come to mind are Kwamari Shemwell, a guy that could be a lockdown corner right away. Uh, Tristan Thompson, a little bit of a project, um, but a guy that really can fly back there, lay the wood. Uh, David uh, Washington right there. He's actually, I don't know which company it is, but I do believe some have him as a four star, actually. So he, he's a pretty good player from Las Vegas. Um a ton of good players in there, like Jelani Davis from Modern Day uh, or Modern Die, however you say that. But if you go down a little more, like I, like I said, they're they're not highly rated guys. A couple of the guys we got late, but I do believe they're being brought in for a purpose. That guy right there, Latristan Thompson, and then right there, Kwamari Shemwell. Um, don't let the ratings fool you. This is something Utah does really well. They really get the guys they want. They don't like you mentioned, right? They're bringing in guys to develop them. I don't. I don't think they're that concerned with where these guys are rated on twenty four seven sports. And when you actually watch the tape on, especially the Tristan Thompson and Kamari Shemwell, which cornerback has been a position of need. They brought in guys that look good. Both of these guys are very good man coverage corners. So in regards to uh, the move to the Big 12, do you think that's impacted recruiting areas of the country, anything like that, approach, style of play, anything that Kyle Whittingham's going to do differently? 
Um, I think when it comes to recruiting and stuff like that, uh, I think we'll probably see a shift more towards Texas and more towards the central part of the country and less West Coast as the years come. I, I don't think we'll see a huge shift in recruits yet, right? But I, I do agree over time we'll probably see that. Um, I think Utah plays their style of football. I don't see us changing too much to adapt specifically to uh, the Big 12 style of play. I think we have – a real good game. Like when we're talking about our style of play, a guy to mention in the transfers is um, what's his name? Chase Ryan. I don't know if you're, you saw that, but Chase Ryan, he's from UCLA. Now the numbers aren't going to wow you. I think he had like 200 yards last year and 80 yards the year before, but he's a special player. He's when you look at PFF grades and stuff like that, all right, Carson Ryan. I don't know why I call him Chase Ryan. Carson Ryan. <laughs> but when you look at uh, PFF grades and stuff like that, he is a very, very good player. It didn't show up in the yards, but in receiving grades, in run blocking grades, guys that got his level of snaps, he was elite, like a top 10 in almost every category when you compared him to guys that were, you know, getting that high level of snaps. Another guy to point out, I think Carson Ryan is kind of the gem of Utah's transfer class. But if you check that guy out right there, Keenan Johnson, straight animal from Georgia Tech. This guy had 400 plus snaps at outside corner in the ACC. He is probably the most underrated transfer Utah picked up. This guy is legit. Four plus 400 plus outside corner snaps in the ACC, which we all know the ACC has some pretty good offenses. And he graded out at a 73.9 PFF grade. And, and Utah fans will tell you, I just mentioned it earlier with some of the freshmen. Cornerback two, we have Zamaya Vaughn, who's an awesome cornerback, one great player. Cornerback two has been a struggle for multiple years. And I think Keenan Johnson is the answer. A lot of people know Utah is a great defense. Cornerback two has been the weak spot of this defense for a long time. I think that guy's the answer to it. Good stuff, Joseph. Uh, appreciate you being here. Uh, you can check out uh, Joseph's work right here on YouTube. Once again, it's the Utah Utes uh, Football Digest. So it's only a click away. Uh, we've got a game coming up against Northwestern in the Las Vegas Bowl. And of course, Kyle Whittingham, long has a racked up bowl wins a uh, year after year after year after year uh, with a great record, especially early in his tenure there at Utah. Now he's run into some Rose Bowl losses here recently. And also uh, the Northwestern matchup uh, makes me recall uh, a lead blown against the Wildcats about five years ago in the Holiday Bowl. But uh, what are you looking at uh, concerning the bowl game performance? Uh, who is this a big game for on the Utah side? And, and just speaking of the Northwestern loss five years ago, if you look at that, the timeline of the loss in that game and then what happened for Utah since then, it has just been uphill. Like that game was kind of a turning point for Utah. You think about right after that, we had the Tyler Huntley season where Utah almost made the college football playoff. A lot of people want to forget that because the end of the season was a rough go, but it really looked like we were doing something special there for a minute. And then you have the COVID season, but I mean, you know, count that as much as you want to. Uh, and then since then, Utah, two Pac-12 championships. And I think eight and four this past year is what we wanted. But considering kind of what went down this year, that's uh, not that bad of a result. Um, I think with Utah, one bright spot to this bowl game, I, I think a lot of fans of Utah and probably even fans of Northwestern understand that Utah is the favorite in this matchup. Not only are we basically playing a home game, I, I can't imagine Northwestern is going to bring even close to as many people as we will. Like Utah travels well. He, I, I don't know if you're familiar with the geography. You, it's a five-hour drive to Las Vegas. Four and a half, you drive really fast. Um, but uh, I, I think one thing that's exciting about this is uh, Utah's been hit by the transfer bug a little. There's a lot of rumors going on about who might transfer. But we have a lot of guys that are going to be playing in this bowl game. Bryson Barnes is the quarterback for Utah. You know, he's not Cam Rising, but he's a solid quarterback and had some really good games towards the end of the year. So I think him being in this game is, is a huge sign for Utah. And I think he's going to do a good job. Uh, wide receiver, we are not going to, from the depth chart they put, our, put out, we're not going to see Devon Bailey, which is a huge hit. 
But Utah's got a, a pretty good receiver room. I think it goes under the radar. Uh, we got guys like Money Parks uh, and Munir McLean. One guy I'm excited to see is Luca Calderella is listed as a starter. He is a JUCO. Or I don't. People get so offended when you call a small school a JUCO. I, I like it, it was a smaller school transfer. I, I don't know if it was a JUCO or not. Um, but I'm excited to see that those three get in and rotate. Jaquindon Jackson will be the starting running back for Utah. A lot of people are worried whether or not he will still be with Utah after this bowl game. I guess we'll see how that goes, but he will be the starting running back for this game. Uh, so that's a good sign. Still got a good running back room. So um, tackle wise, we will not see say Tawa Laumea, which who has been a force at right tackle. Spencer Fano is going to be moving over to right tackle with Tanoa Togiai taking over the left tackle snaps. Tackle has been a tough position for us all year, but uh, I, I do think we'll do just fine against uh, Northwestern. So that's anything else on the offense. Any, any other questions there? Well, basically, as we move into 2024 with what happened to the quarterback position this year with Cam Rising early in the season being expected to come back, expected to come back, and then finally saying, hey, it's not happening this year. This is a serious deal, yeah. uh, more serious than anyone knew. And then you mentioned, of course, Nate Johnson had uh, various uh, packages for him uh, and Bryson Barnes, of course, uh, I tend to get the guys can Bryson Barnes was the guy that came into the Rose Bowl against Ohio State and threw the touchdown yep. pass, right? Yep, that's Bryson Barnes, the yes. pig farmer. And, and then you've got, uh, uh, of course, now how does that project toward next season in regards to the quarterback room and what we expect? I mean, I think you clearly expect Cam Rising to be the guy for Utah. Like, I think a lot of people in the country know, but I think Utah fans know especially. It's Cam Rising's stats aren't going to wow you. They're very good stats, but this guy is special. Bryson Barnes ain't, and is in the transfer portal, and Nate Johnson is already committed to Vanderbilt. Um, I don't expect either one of them to be on the roster, but leaning back to what we were talking about earlier with the recruiting class, we're going to have Isaac Wilson coming in, who is a four-star prospect, and I think it's a bit of a shame that he's not – a higher rated four star prospect. This kid was number six in the country in total passing yards with third, and it was like 4,500 passing yards. Don't quote me, but it's, you know, something in that range. It was 1,300 rushing yards. The kid had a wildly good season. And Bishop Gorman, a team that was the national champions this year, Isaac Wilson had a good game against as well. I mean, not a crazy game, but he, he did a good job. And, and it was just, um, it, he's an exciting backup prospect. Outside of him, we've got Brandon Rose next year as the backup. Brandon Rose is a very good quarterback. The The coaching staff has lauded him with praise, and I think the number one reason we didn't see him this last half of the year is due to the medical redshirt. He got hurt earlier in the year, and we got to a point where Bryson looked good, and we only had two, three games left, and I think they just said, all right, we're just not going to play Brandon Rose. So. That's the quarterback position next year. Cam Rising's the man, though. He's, I don't think there's, um, you know, behind the scenes, the word is they paid him a ton of money to come back this year. So I don't think anyone else has challenged him there. How do you feel about the, uh, the change in conferences? Well, uh, Mark, I think we're going to win the Big 12 next year. Uh, that's a lot of people don't, don't like Utah saying that. And it's not about being cocky. I actually think the Big 12 is a really good conference. I think Utah, for me, probably would have won the Pac-12 this year if they had Cam Rising. I think Cam Rising's a special quarterback, like I said. And I think you look at the high end of the Pac-12 this year, once you remove Texas, Texas and Oklahoma, I don't think the Big 12 had that. And so I think you bring Utah over there and – and with Cam Rising, I think it's going to be a tough – it's not going to be easy. I don't like to seem unnecessarily cocky. It's just I really do believe Utah, if they don't win it, they will make a very strong run for the Big 12 title. Well, I got to say that anytime I've been asked about it, my pat answer has been that, you know, there is so much that has to be uh, worked through in regards to recruiting classes and transfer portal and all that to, to assess the teams next August. But yeah. if you're just going by recent history, if you're going by coaching, if you're going by where the programs stand right now, Utah's got the best program uh, when you throw the entire big 12 together. Well, you're a smart guy, Mark. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Joseph, we appreciate you, man. Thanks for stopping by. Cool. Thank you so much, Mark. Hey guys, I'm out of here. Go Utes.